there's no, no, no speed. speed control. It's either mm -hmm. full speed or lopsided. We talked about evolution and now how we are in devolution. And this is the period that what we experience of the world around us, not spiritually, I'm talking about the physical world, is that at most we can call it the manifestation of the divine. But we actually have to begin to experience it as the dead manifestation of the divine. That the physical world is moving more and more into the calculus. Because we are in the calculable. It used to be incalculable when it was the manifestation of the divine. And this is part of what's starting to call progress. So, and in this devolution is the time in which spiritually we start meeting the very beings who helped to guide us to the point where then they had to step back. And that their sun or their moon separated from us. And then we look at the coming incarnation of Araman and how to prepare for that. Kurzweil's singularity where he has a vision of the future. And when you read Steiner, you can find absolute parallels. But Kurzweil's are materialistic perspective and Steiner's that match up are from a spiritual science perspective. So they may sound similar, but how they <coughs> come about and what effects they have are totally different, of course. And this is an area then of artificial intelligence and what I am also calling the coming artificial soul of machines that enter our feeling life. And then this question of merging with machines that we see happening on the slippery slope of prosthetics. <clears throat> and how military will love these developments. And yesterday, we tried to come down more to Earth and Moon and looked at the separation of the Moon in the past and how it's going to reconnect somewhere in the eighth or ninth millennia. But before that, women will become infertile. So we try to imagine how do we prepare for this infertility? Are the beings that we might call the good beings allowing the dark or fallen angels to have more of a role in a way similar to the role that Judas had to play that Christ could go through death? So are we finding that the good angels who have been guiding us in higher hierarchies are allowing us to delve into things like GMO, sorry, but maybe, um, and in IVF and vitro fertilization and these three parent babies and genetic engineering of embryos and coming to designer babies and so on. Do we see the egotism that can pour into this that can lead to things like the war of all against all? Very scary stuff, I agree. It's, and, and so this is why I keep saying it has to be allowed to happen. It's not right to go out and try to ban it. It's also not right to say, I'm going to be in a scene I am going to shut it out because when you shut it out, you make it more intense. You allow for Araman to have his way with everyone else. And in that way, he will be able to overcome you when you incarnate again. Is there a man a god? Sorry? Is there a man a god? By a Greek definition, yes. Okay. Or a Persian definition, he is one of the gods, yes. His origin? So, um, 
I haven't found the definitive. I have found several anthroposophists who have said they found that something that Steiner points to that um, Lucifer's fall was on the planetary, or not fall, but he stayed behind. He would be from old moon. But that Araman comes from a very different stream and is brought in to this earthly time, in a sense, for the first mm -hmm. time as a different role. So he, um, in the hierarchies, would be at the level of an archai. He's higher than Michael. Mm -hmm. And yet, in the images that we see, Michael has him yeah. uh, under yeah. his feet. Mm -hmm. So down. this is the effort of Michael to rise now from being an archangel to an archai, that he can do that. And we he can rise do that. Into the fullness of it, right? And we can do that. And he's expecting that we can too, we because to he has that. pushed this beam down yeah. to where we can stand on it as well. Yeah. Keep that track and tell me. I was just going to say when you talk about um, uh, infertility and test tube babies, that raven world at El Copsley right. grows that whole, I mean, it's very prophetic as far as the delta and the gamma, you know, uh, selected. And it's fascinating how much of this science fiction of the past is coming true today. And that's why I say these people have access to the same visions of the future that Rudolf Steiner had. Not as far, not as deep, because they only approach it from a materialistic perspective. They don't understand really what is the human being. But this is by these contrasts is how we will come to understand because if we don't have those contrasts, we're too lazy. Sorry, we are. We're just too lazy to get there. You had a question, I think. Yeah. Uh, it's going back a bit. Why do you stress this infertility of women? And is there any relationship to infertility or not of men? So, in the story of Adam and Eve, we tried to distinguish between what became the feminine and the, and the masculine as they separated. And the masculine being so connected with the earth and, and its ability to fertilize through the physical, and the woman's fertilization was through the spiritual. And this expression, he knew her. Mm -hmm. That's the key word. Is the key, right, That's is, the is key how word. to understand that. Um, and so in, in our time, we can look back to try to grasp the inspiration of how, you know, I drew this parabola, and the things that occurred back here have a fulfillment back here. We can try to understand what the healthy way through this is by understanding that past. I'd also add that um, it's useful that um, people, um, like our development continues to about age 28, 27, 28 right now. The time of Christ is that uh, it went to 33. So this, um, That's coming up, but yes. California down so that both men and women will yeah, be so what you're bringing up is a very important point I will, I will mention right now because it's here on the floor, but um, when, when Christ was at the age of 33, it's the time in which what the soul could receive through the body for its development comes to an end, our maturation, in a sense, from all that the gods have given us came to an end then. And that age continues to creep down. downward, it falls seven years every 2,160 years. It comes down seven years. And so when we get to this point where women are infertile, we will have crossed the year 14. They can't, 
be fertile after that because the body will be exhausted what it can give to the soul. There can be no fertilization after that. And hence then the moon has to return because mm -hmm. that whole direction comes from the moon. Oh, really? <clears throat> and this pushes our dependency on machines, on technology. And, and as he said, Steiner said that we will rely and these good angels will direct us to the dark or the fallen angels for that continuedness. And America in particular has to use that in order to fulfill what it needs to fulfill in that seventh post-Atlantean cultural mm -hmm, age mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that we're supposed to lead. Yeah, so you're really saying we need to embrace and develop the technology to the highest extent possible. Um, not and quite, use it for the good. But it needs to come at the right time and it needs to provide the right contrasts so that we begin to see who we are. We begin to all human know thou thyself. So uh, that's, it, this comes into sort of the practical realm of when I, you know, when certain things offend me, <laughs> certain technology offends me, uh, my soul, really, am I supposed to be like, oh, How, how do I, like, how do I, how are you suggesting we deal with that tension? So, this, this is the battle that goes on to develop the consciousness soul. And I'm sorry, I, I, you know, people want stand here, this is the right place to stand, you know, and all good people stand here, and over here is the bad place to stand, and, you know. And we want that so much. It's so deep in us to be that way. But in the consciousness soul era, a lot of what seems bad has a purpose. And we have to see it in totally different ways. It is, um, it's a question of our morality. More than anything else, we have to become deeply aware of what we are doing and how what we do is all moral today. So if you're acting and you think I'm doing something good, but really what you're hoping is people are going to, oh Joe, you did such a wonderful job, we just love you for doing that. And you go, oh, I'm such a good guy. That was for you that you did that act of kindness. I mean, you gave a million dollars to the university, but they put it up, this is Linnell Hall, you know, of engineering, you know, and uh, it, these acts of today call for this selflessness and this development of selflessness that we have to work on for this development of the consciousness soul is all important for the future. So if, if someone is doing genetically modified food selflessly, then it's fine? So, this is the great question, absolutely. This is exactly where the problem is. And this is why these are all slippery slopes, they're all, you know, double-edged swords. And, uh, and, and that's, that's why it's so hard, because everyone in the room, including myself, oh my God, it can't be like that. But it is. And, and, and yet we have to, these quotes from Steiner, we have to take the world as it is and work from there. We can see, but the oh, that's going to take us too far down. But How do I balance that? The Buddhists take the world as it is, and they're into you know, compassion and right. kindness and right action. Right. This doesn't seem to have right action in it or a particular need for mindfulness. Yeah, mindfulness or 